Okay, in this scene we're going to talk about class 1 antiarrhythmics, and specifically class 1A. And it's going to be represented by this student over here, who doesn't like arithmetic. He doesn't like arithmetic. He's anti-arithmetic. Anti-arithmetic reminds us of anti-arrhythmic, and he always has this gun with him. Well, it's actually like three guns together that make it the shape of an A. So this is the gun A. Gun A for 1A. And in this scene, he hijacked his class over here. This is the classroom. So this is going to remind us of class 1A antiarrhythmic drugs. So let's begin. So class 1A antiarrhythmics act on sodium channels. And that's why if you take a look up here, in the classroom, for some reason, they always have this sodium channel on. The sodium channel is about salt, table salt, which reminds us of sodium, and they're always on the sodium channel. And here, it's exploding! So they block the sodium channel. And we also notice the banana, which reminds us of potassium, that they also act on potassium channels. That is, they're also involved in some potassium channel blocking effects. But if you take a look over here, we notice the picture of the states over here, the United States, which reminds us that class 1 antiarrhythmics are state dependent meaning they bind it to cardiac tissue that's depolarizing a lot. That is, they're more effective when the arrhythmia is severe, such as in abnormally overactive parts of the heart. And that's why we have this tack over here, this thumb tack, to remind us of tachycardia, that there will be selective depression of tissue that is frequently depolarized, such as in tachycardia. Now let's take a look at the board over here. So we see they're learning arithmetic, but it's actually not numbers over here, it's actually A, V. A plus V. A is going to remind us of atrial, and V for ventricular. That the antiarrhythmics 1A treats both atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. And this is because they act on atrial and ventricular myocytes, as well as on the cells of the Purkinje fibers. But it's the atrial and ventricular myocytes that we're trying to highlight over here. What happens is, they block the entry of sodium into the myocytes. So this causes a slower depolarization. And that's represented by this graph over here, where we see a decrease in the slope, in phase zero. We also note in this graph the increase in the effective refractory period, the ERP, in the ventricular action potential. On the EKG, this shows up as a longer QT segment. And that's why if you take a look over here, he tied the teacher down over here and attached this QT balloon over here with the prolonged QT. Maybe he thought the teacher was a cutie or something. The prolonged QT is going to help us remember the prolonged QT interval seen on the EKG. We'll get to this pen guy in a second. So slower depolarization leads to a slower conduction of the action potential, which leads to a slower heart rate. Now let's talk about the drugs that are included in class 1A. This is represented by the class motto over here that we see up here. The Queen proclaims Dizo's Pyramid. This reminds us of the class 1A antiarrhythmics. Queen for quinidine, proclaims for procanamide, and Dizo's Pyramid for disopyramide. All of these drugs are used to treat arrhythmias, but they should be avoided in people with heart failure due to the negative inotropic effects on the heart. Now, if you take a look over here at Proclaims, which represents procainamide, you might have noticed this wolf, which reminds us that procainamide is effective in treating wolf Parkinson White syndrome. And this is specifically a white wolf to help us remember wolf Parkinson White. Now, take a look at Queen over here. We notice that this person over here in the Queen has a headache. This is actually synchronism, in which there's headache along with tinnitus, and this is seen with quinidine use. Then we come back to the QT interval. Due to the prolonged QT interval, they can trigger a type of arrhythmia called torsade de poet, which means twisting of points. And that's why we have this torso guy made of pens, ballpoint pens. We'll just call them the points. The torso of points for torsade de point. One more side effect that we see up here, we see the loop with procainamide, which reminds us that long-term use of procainamide can lead to systemic lupus erythematosus. More accurately, it's actually the reversible systemic lupus erythematomus-like syndrome. And finally, we notice this trombone on its side over here, which reminds us of thrombocytopenia, as all these drugs can lead to thrombocytopenia. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs. Take care.